You're listening to The Long Game Podcast with Sandra Scaiano. In a world where everyone is doing, it's easy to get lost in a sea of comparison, secret tricks, and promises of overnight success. The Long Game is my approach to business. The actual day-in and day-out philosophy that you have to show up, you have to do the work, and there's no quick fixes for long-term success. I'm a web designer, digital strategist, and energetic thinker, and I'm here to share the process and lessons I experience with my clients daily who are going through the same struggles of building a business as you are. We'll hear from successful entrepreneurs sharing their long game strategies, and I'm fun, so we're going to have a little fun along the way too. Thanks for being here. Let's get to today's episode. Hello, and welcome to this episode of The Long Game. Today, we are talking about launching with Krista Smith. Um, she's a very special guest to me because Krista has been a mentor for me in my own business. She helps women over 40 get confident with the tech that will allow their businesses to thrive online. She started her career in the classroom, armed with an education degree. She moved to teaching tech about 10 years ago. Between coaching, she's a trained, co-active coach, building websites for her clients, and teaching women how to code. She's learned plenty about helping women launch profitable businesses. And she does so in her business, Activate Her Awesome. And there'll be a link in the show notes. So uh, today we are talking about launching with Krista. Welcome, Krista. Thank you. I am so excited to be here with you today, Sandra. It's just a delight. So Krista and I go way back. Krista was the co-creator of an all-female coding program that I was a part of. And many of us have stuck together to this day. And, you know, what she really created was a powerful space of support and learning online. And it's been a big part of my business and my growth. And we've all stayed in touch and support each other. So I wanted to mention this because as we talk about launching today, community is a big part of what we create. So Krista's here because we had a community. Keep that in mind as we go. So today we're going to talk about the five mistakes entrepreneurs make when launching. So Krista, tell us about any ideas of launching to start. When you get started, when you're ready to launch or get going, what are some of the things that you should be thinking about? Oh my gosh. First, you need a strategy. Like if you don't have someone in your corner who is helping you map out a schedule and how you're going to roll everything out and helping you take a step back and maybe, or maybe even take a step up and look at that 10,000 foot view because you need someone who's, you're so in it, you're focused on all the details that sometimes we miss the little things. So I think having a partner that you can rely on who can say, hey, have you considered this? And oh, how are you going to onboard people to this? And what does that experience look like? And helping you just see the big picture. Right. And it is such a emotional time as well, so that it's good to have somebody to just talk about, oh my gosh, I forgot to do that. Or look at this, that kind of thing. Like, you know, I love that you have a support system if you're going through some type of launch. And I think it's equally as important, especially when you're finished your launch, because the vulnerability hangover that hits you because you are putting yourself out there, like everything. And it's always personal, especially for women. And like just being able to just be tender with yourself and give yourself space after it's over because launching is, especially when you're putting your, your work, like it, it is your work, all of it. And you've created it and you've nurtured it. And it's this beautiful little seed that's growing. And then you put it out into the world and people are receiving it. There's a tremendous amount of acknowledgement that happens, but also that's very, it's very vulnerable. Agreed. I mean, just launching this podcast, I went through every feeling that you have said since it's, you know, now I'm in my groove, but you have that feeling of like in your stomach feeling too. Even though you believe in what you're doing, you believe in what you're saying, it's that vulnerability. So completely agree. And I also love when you had said that, have someone else for the after piece. It also made me think about, having someone to share that win with who intimately knows, you know, like my husband doesn't know. He has no idea, you know, like what it means to me or in that way or what I went through to get to that point necessarily. So, you know, having someone to share the the positive piece as well once you're over. 
Oh my gosh, it's so true. We want our partners to really cheer and appreciate and understand it. And they can't get it. If they're not in it, they can't get it. And that's okay. So it's even more important to have people in your corner who do get it because it's a huge deal. It's a really big deal. Completely. So number one on your list of mistakes people make is start before you're ready. Don't wait until you're ready. No. How many people I have seen just not even do it. Like they have an idea and then they wait and they wait and they wait. And then sometimes what happens is they get stuck in analysis paralysis. So they have an idea and they're like, oh no, I need to get everything ready first. And they feel like they need to take how many more courses? I don't know how many more courses these women need before they (laughs) actually launch their idea. But those courses aren't going to help them. They have everything. Like you know it all. And there are ways ways to get out there before you're ready and still feel confidence, right? Like so many ways, like number one that I can think of is practicing living room strategy. So do something live and record Mm -hmm. it while you're doing it live. And you can repurpose the content that's starting before you're ready. Cause it's like no pressure. You're not doing it huge deal online. You're doing it, you know, probably locally. You could totally do that and start before you're ready. What I did most recently to launch before I was ready is I actually launched a program and I only had, I don't know, one tenth of the content there. Mm -hmm. I let it come from the participants. So I started way before I was ready. And they loved the experience because I was creating it particularly for their needs. Right. So tailored to them. Right. Right. And the story that we make up that, oh, if everything's not there and they're not wowed, they're going to be disappointed. It actually works the other way. And they're like, oh, everything's not there, but I'm not overwhelmed. And she's going to give me exactly what I need. I also like that you said, start with some of it in there. So that first week, let's say, You can let that go, you know, they go into something so that you don't feel behind the eight ball in that. And then you can start to create because launching takes so much time and energy that you want to be able to give that. Because in my head, I've always said, oh, it's got to all be complete so that when I launch, I can just put my energy into that. But it actually doesn't. Only the beginning part. Because again, we only have to be two steps ahead. Because we do know this stuff. We are the experts. We know. And I love that idea of being able to tailor it. And then number one goes right into number two, which is the second mistake is people waiting for it to be perfect. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just say yes, 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 with a bunch of exclamation points on this. Right? It's never perfect. (laughs) It's never going to be perfect. Here's the honest to goodness truth. And this is where my coach training comes into play here. Your inner critic will have a little pity party inside your head and tell you all the things that are wrong with it. And you have to wait for every pixel to be perfect. I see this with people who launch websites. I see this with people who launch new offers, new ideas, whatever. They agonize over every single pixel on the website. And the reality is, if someone spends one minute on your whole website, you're winning. I just said to a client right now, I said, this looks amazing. And if you change it, it's going to take longer to go live. Like yeah. I'll change it, but you're your own block. Right yeah. Now. Women in particular, I find are their own blocks. We think we're not good enough. We think, oh, it's not ready. Like it's just, it's not perfect. So it's never going to be perfect. Nothing is ever perfect. So it's best to just jump in, get it out there, know that you're going to be vulnerable when you put it out there. And you know what? If you have a grammar mistake somewhere, there are lovely, kind people in the world who point it out very nicely <laughs> and then you can fix it, right? Like you can have all of the people look over it and you're still not going to see every single period that's out of place. And that doesn't mean you're not worthy. If there's not at problem. all. <laughs> it means that's the only thing that they could find wrong with it. Isn't that okay. a good thing? Right? Exactly. What a oh great my reality. gosh. It's so <laughs> you know, true. I also think with the waiting to be perfect in the delay of it, that it lets in those thoughts and fears that someone else is already doing the same idea. Like the longer you take to put something out there, other people are going to have similar or their own version. And that's a mindset thing for you where you're like, oh my gosh, I, why even? 
why even finish? Yep. Yep. So I find what happens is people use that outside measuring stick. So they go to compare and despair and they mm-hmm. go and they're looking at it and they're like, oh my God, like I'm waiting for this to be perfect. And now she's doing it. Like, right. what, what's the point? And then what happens is they go right from compare and despair to chuck it, fuck it. And they're like, I'm not doing anything because it can't be perfect. And now she's doing it. And the reality of that is that your people need you your way and her people need exactly. her way. And to your naked eye, it might look like she's got it all together and is running a successful business, but you don't actually know if that program is working for her. You don't know if the secret sauce that you bring isn't exactly actually what she's missing. Yeah, completely. And it takes us right into... Point number three of mistakes that entrepreneurs make is not taking the time to identify the actual gap that you're filling, which goes right back to that point of it's okay to be doing the same thing, but you're bringing your unique piece to it. Absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. So many times what I see women do get tripped up in, in creating some kind of a new offer is they're teaching what they want to teach Mm -hmm. and they're not teaching how to identify what is in the gap. So they're actually not going to people and saying, Hey, I have this idea. I really want to create this course offer, whatever it is, website, doesn't matter product, fill in the blank. What do you need? Like, what would you need? You know what I mean? Like when you Mm -hmm. actually do that and I can, I'm, I'm a perfect example. I can bring myself in here. I launched a course last year called website in a weekend helping people like literally try to get their website in the weekend. I think I had 30 students go through it and only two actually finished their website. And I had to really look at that and go, Hmm. So where did I miss the mark? I missed the mark because I didn't go to my audience and find out what the gap was. I didn't find out what they actually needed. And instead I was prescriptive and gave them a solution that was too advanced for their needs. So the two that finished were more experienced entrepreneurs who had some experience and they were like literally launched in a week and the rest of them straggled and straggled and straggled and straggled. And some of them still don't have a website up there, but it was because I didn't identify the gap early enough. I fixed that. Such a good point. And that's the thing too. It gives you the opportunity to go back and tweak and fix that. Like we all, I mean, you know, I always tell my clients, like you have to work in your business. You can't just think your business because when you think it, you think, you know, but you really don't until you're working with clients and they tell you, and then you listen to them and then create the programs, the solutions, all of that based on what their real need is. So yeah, I love that you, you know, really brought that piece. And I think the other piece within that is we often think we need to provide so much more than we actually do. So by listening to our clients or customers and finding out specifically what is the gap, what is it that they need help with, then we just give them what they need help with. We might actually in our mind have an idea for a product, a course, whatever, that could be actually three courses. And you can actually create more revenue for yourself if you actually allowed your clients and customers to experience success with each small thing. Yeah. And you just made me think too about, I've been thinking for my own business, like, yeah, there's these things already exist, but you know, I keep coming back to this one idea where I'm like, but that one idea doesn't exist. And it's the one piece that the other ones don't have. So even if I created the one piece, the other people have created the eight other modules. I can just create the one module even that helps you untie, like the light bulb goes off. You yes. understand at that point. Like I've kind of been looking at my own business that way. Like take the pressure off. I don't need to reinvent the wheel. I just need to say what I've identified as that little slice that everyone's getting tripped up on. Yes, absolutely. And what an amazing opportunity. So before we started recording, you and I were talking a lot about community and how we both feel like whenever you're doing something, you want to create community, especially when you're launching something, you want to build your community spirit around that. And what a great opportunity for someone who's just creating that one piece to then reach out to other women and say, Hey, I know you have this amazing program offer, whatever. I'm doing this one small piece. I would love to just send people to you. What do you think about that for the other pieces? They may have some kind of affiliate marketing that they're happy to extend Mm -hmm. to you, or they're like, 
oh my God, this woman is amazing. She's just going to send people to me because she likes the way that I do it. That goes so far in the online world. It's crazy. And you're extending your community because guess what she's going to do? She's going to start sending people to you and talking about mm-hmm. you because you've identified the gap. Yeah, completely, completely. And and I love that whole idea of there isn't that competitive piece. Like, You've got that answer, like go. And there's room for both of us, you know, to be here Absolutely. to do our thing and complement each other. You know, I find that's a lot, uh, you know, when you ask anybody, any woman in the entrepreneurial space, how many courses have you bought? You know, we've all got the dozen or so that were, you know, so there is room and it doesn't mean some of them too, you've bought in the same genre because you feel like, okay, I didn't get what I needed. So I only feel that they're not delivering it the way that you need it delivered. So of course you keep looking for the right answer. You still have the problem. Yes. And I think, you know, it's really interesting. It's a whole nother viewpoint to think about things too, of think about what's out there and analyze what they already cover. Yes. So yeah. that you can sell to those same people and be like, I know you bought X course, but it didn't touch on this. This is the complement to that course. Yes. Positioning. So coded. interesting, you know, because it's limitless. There's, you know, it's really limitless with what you can, when you bring your ideas forth and your talents forth. Absolutely. Okay. So we're going to move on to number four. Number four is not taking followers behind the scenes of what you're creating and, you know, not really driving them to like something that's list building and and all of that tied together. So let's talk about that. Absolutely. And we, we even talked about this before the call today too. I did not leave myself enough time this morning to take Pete, my, even my audience behind the scenes of saying, I'm going to be on a podcast today. So (laughs) what I'm going to do, so that's time management, right? Like I got sucked into a vortex of just what happens with me is once I get into a work mode, I just, I don't even know the time's gone. It's like, Oh, two hours later, there you go. So I think it's really important whatever we're doing anything, especially if we're creating something that we want to go out on mass take people behind the scenes. I don't know about you, but it's one of the reasons that reality TV is an influencer. Influencer marketing is so big because they take us behind the scenes. They take us on the story. We get to see the journey, how it started from idea to completion. And even if your audience doesn't catch all of it, they're catching the highlights and that's enough. And right there, because they were invested in the very beginning, they're like, oh my God, she's actually, oh, the, she's launched. They feel like they need it, but they've been along for the journey the whole way. And one of the things that we can do to capture some of that energy is to have an early notification page. Like, mm-hmm. get, make sure you are collecting names for your offer weeks and months before you, you, it's never too early to put an early notification thing up and get interest. Because when you go to launch, you're going to have a list of people who are primed and possibly ready to purchase. And if you don't do that, you're going to launch to crickets. Right. I love this whole concept of the behind the scenes and building that piece out because I want for myself come into the whole, all right, I decided I set the date. I'm, you know, the timing, the overall timing of it sneaks up on me, but it also shows those behind the scenes pieces show the transformation, which is ultimately what we should be selling with and what we should be leading with. Because it isn't just the formula, it's the transformation that everybody wants. So when you're showing, you know, to your reality TV point, someone in curlers still at, sitting at getting ready, and then there they are on the red carpet, like that shows the transformation to the end product, and, you know, and we're, we're all enticed by that. So I really love that. And it's something I'm working on a little bit more for myself. And I think also it ends up being a, a block type of thing that some people have to let go of a little bit. Again, it's the imperfect, yes. it's showing behind the scenes of the process. So two things that I can say to that, that helped me tremendously because I had the exact same blocks. The first one was I felt like anybody who was able to just get on and do live video and by live video, I mean, just getting on Instagram stories or doing a video and you're publishing it doesn't actually have to be alive, though. You could be talking about that too. I figured they had to be extroverts and oh my God, they must not have to worry about protecting their energy. And (laughs) I don't understand how they can just get on and do it. Like I just, they're, they're talking to so many people at one time. I'm raising my hand. That's me. Right? <laughs> right? Yes. Whereas 
the introvert, I am an introvert and I have to protect my energy. And I remember saying, I took an Instagram course and I said this to one of the mentors. I'm like, I don't understand. Like you seem really introverted. I don't understand how you can just get on Instagram stories and like talk. And she's like, well, Krista, it's just you and your phone. And I was like, huh, you're right. That changed everything for me. And I feel like the more confidence I got just because I was doing it. Now I don't care. I can be in my pajamas with no makeup on and I'll still show up on stories probably because I know they disappear in 24 hours. So it's a great place (laughs) to be able to be messy, right? I don't know if I'd necessarily probably post that in my feed that I'd want to stay around forever. But you know what? At this point, nothing would surprise me because it's real and relatable. And that's what people want. They want to get to know the person behind the brand, the more that you can take them along and show them, the more they get to know you. It's all about that. Mm -hmm. No, like trust. Trust. How do you build that? How do you build that? You build that by being, by being vulnerable, by letting people in, letting them know what you think about and how Mm -hmm. things. And I think overall, and this has been happening for a while, that People are looking for long-term relationships in their mentors and who they're studying with. Like, I know I am. I don't just want your course and then be like, I'm going to take that knowledge and go. Like, I want you. I want that relationship. So I take my time to figure out who I want to follow and who I want to purchase from because I want to build a relationship with them yes. and be in for the long haul and get the next piece and all of that. Again, it's about the long game, right, Sandra? The whole thing is about the long game. And even in choosing the coach that I'm working with right now, I chose her program based on the fact that it was 13 months long. It was one of the deciding factors because I want to know, because you can't do something in three months. I'm sorry, you just can't. Like You just get into it and then you're turned around. And if you have one or two things go wrong with your family or your kids or your pets or whatever... You've lost four, right? Completely. I actually do the 90 day, but I do it for a year. So we plan in 90 days, but we're working together extended. And it's funny that you mentioned that because I noticed that the people who have made the longer commitments are the ones who have the most success. Sure. You know, you you could hop out after 90 days if you wanted to. Sure. But it's that long-term commitment. So it's the strategic ally piece, right? Like they're able to tap into you and use your brain and help them whatever their goals are. It doesn't matter. Whatever the results are that they're looking for, when you have someone in your corner, which always goes back to that full circle piece at the beginning, like you need to be strategic. You need to have someone in your corner that you can trust that can see the bigger picture when you can't. Right. And I think part of that comes out too of when you were so in it, you're feeling all those feelings too. So it is harder to kind of take a step back where someone who comes in, I'm a big proponent of coaching programs. I always talk about that through all of my work, you know, and have someone come in and look in and say, Oh, have you thought about this? And you're like, how could I not have thought about that? You know, it's like, you're so emotionally tied and so close to it. So yes, totally true. And now this is another great segue into the fifth mistake that people make, which is forgetting to offer your loyal subscribers when launching, like those have been around and already purchased from you, like give them an exclusive offer and also bump up your sales. In the Absolutely. Beginning. Absolutely. We forget. We sometimes we some I was even guilty of forget. Oh, I did an early notification for that. Oh, I probably should send an email out to that after I send out my email to everyone. So again, the importance of had I have had a plan and a strategic partner to help me figure Mm -hmm. it out, I wouldn't have missed that one step. But I would have sent that out a week before I actually launched because they said to me, Hey, I really like what you're doing. And I've given you my email address. People don't just give you their email address anymore. Like inboxes are sacred territory to a lot of women. So the fact that they've trusted you with that means they want to hear from you. So they're ready for the pitch. You need to pitch them and you need to, in my opinion, give them something for being there early for real, like make it juicy because a, it's going to boost your revenue in the beginning because there you've got a warm list of people who are possibly ready to purchase from you, which is really great for your ego, which your ego often needs to say yes. Cause that's ego balances out inner critic. So sometimes, right, right, right. right. But, but you need to have that, Oh my gosh, that confidence that, and actually maybe it's not ego. Maybe it's just your inner mentor, like the person inside that knows you've got Got this, like, oh, I've got this. People are buying it. They want it. That's great. So then when you're pitching it to cold audiences or people maybe who aren't aware of exactly what you're doing, it becomes so much easier to do it. 
And that's momentum building for you when you open up and there are people who are pressing purchase in the very beginning. That gives you the energy and the momentum to move through the next seven days or however many days you have a cart open. That's right. I also want to mention, I saw an interesting thing by Tarzan Kay who does email marketing. And she sent out an email and said, you know, early bird, you'll, you'll be the first to know you're on the list kind of thing. And you're still going to get every bonus that's offered if you buy early. And I was like, that is brilliant. Because you know when you first buy, then you watch as every day something new comes up. And you're like, crap, you know, shit, I should have just waited. And I want that thing. And it's like, well, I'm going to tell you, you're going to get all the things because you're here in the beginning and the early bird pricing, but you're going to get all the things. Because we still want all the things. I mean, those emails keep coming and they're so juicy and layered and... And I thought that was a brilliant tactic. Yes, I love it. And what I find that happens is, is that they'll offer up like maybe a one-to-one session with the person who's doing it. So you actually get their brain instead of doing it in a group. And they don't do that till like day three. Or they'll offer up a scholarship position. Hey, apply here, you know, nominate this person and you and a friend can get in. And I've already purchased. So what I love about what you just said is that you're just going to say up front, you know what, you're going to get it all and don't worry about it. You don't have to wait. Right, exactly. Because that really pushes pushes the momentum of act now. You yes. know? It pushes that because especially as entrepreneurs, we've been trained to think a certain way about a launch cycle. The we formula know that there's, is going to come. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And we know there's going to be a big bonus at the end and a fast track, blah, 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 and all of that. So I just thought that was brilliant because it made me think like, like, yeah, why shouldn't I take advantage and hit right now? Because whatever happens over the next seven days, like I could do it if I wanted, you know, I'll get it. Yeah. So I thought, you know, those kind of things are brilliant. And those are ways to reward your audience who signed up for the list or their existing customers because they're getting that first email. Yes. One of the other things that I had when I was on retreat with my own coach, so Heather Crabtree is who I was away with in February. And one of the things that she was teaching us was to stack all your bonuses the first day. So, Hmm. hey, sending this out to you because you signed up and here are all the bonuses that are going to be offered. They're going to go away day by day. So if you purchase today, you get all the bonuses. Ah, (laughs) okay. If you purchase today, you get all the bonuses. And I'm not going to tell you which one's going to go away, but every 24 hours, one of the bonuses is going to go away. Oh, I like that. That's a good strategy too, right? right? Because if you're on the fence, it's like, why should I wait? Yes. The only time that sucks is if like, oh, I really didn't hear about it until. So in that case, you get to decide in that moment where, oh my gosh, like I'm just reading this now and I've been away for three days and... You get to decide whether you're going to extend that. And I I wouldn't think that anybody who isn't listening to this podcast probably would say, you know what, I'm going to bend the rules just for you. Totally. Right. And that's also about speaking up and reaching out. You know, if someone took the time to do that to me, I would be like, I want you to have everything that you need or you want because you're ready. You know, like that's an ideal client who's ready. Okay. These two takeaways are like gold for anybody listening to this podcast. If you're thinking of (laughs) launching anything, just those two things alone. (laughs) Right. Totally. Right. Totally. And, you know, we have to go back to also that your existing audience they're the people who are going to spread the word. Yes. So, you know, anybody who's already been a subscriber or a purchaser or an existing client, like they know you the best. Like you were saying, you know, they're a warm audience. We always talk about starting with that. And then they're going to go and say how much success they've had or how they love working with you, all of that. So they add that extra layer of social proof and word of mouth to things as well. And I've seen lately a lot of really great, unique ways that people are... So at this, we could add on number... uh, What are we on? Six? Um, Uh, (laughs) Like creating a graphic so that as soon as someone purchases your offer, whatever it is, letting them share that on social media. Like I purchased... Mm -hmm fill in the blank because they get to put their own, you know, reason and then tag you and then you will share it with their audience. So the benefit for them, like why they would actually want to do that is because if you've got a bigger audience than they do, 
it gets them in front of a whole lot of people. So yeah. there is a huge, and I want to show people that's my social proof. I can actually spread the word and just get you to just fill in this one little slide on a story that you like, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And that's excitement building. I mean, that also is reaffirming to you that you, that's money well spent. Like you're like, Oh, look at it. It's starting already. <laughs> you know, the, the excitement, the transformation, all of that, it's starting immediately. So. Yeah. And people feel that energy. It's palpable even in the online world. Like, oh, ooh, ooh, I really like that. Like, check her out. Look at her go. Look at all these people who mm-hmm. are saying, yes, I got to check that out. There's there's strategy infused in almost design, right? Making sure that your design is beautiful and catchy and branded and it creates energy and that just makes more people interested in your offer. You know, you just made me think too, you've been doing a lot with design lately and you've actually come out with some, tell us about some Canva templates, yes. like, you know, using Canva. I mean, this was something, uh, Krista is... She's got a lot of talents. And when she decides to learn a platform, she really embodies it and goes all in and then helps to break it down for the rest of us. So um, Krista just recently launched some Canva templates. Tell us about that. I did. Absolutely. So I'm going to be completely honest in that I was a Canva snob previous to about uh, four months ago. I tried it a couple of years ago and it was just clunky and... I couldn't do anywhere near like Sandra and I are used to using the Adobe suite of services. And when you're used to using proper graphic design software, moving to something like Canva, it just, it, it was hard to do. And mm-hmm. I needed to do it because the client was working in it and she needed to have templates set up. So I'm like, okay, I'll check it out. I was blown away by the changes that they made and saw the... Yeah, they keep improving. Oh my gosh. And saw the practicality and how I could actually empower a lot of the women that I work with to take their design to the next level. Because the biggest thing that I hear, and I'm sure you hear the same thing as a designer, is that it takes so much time to get in my schedule, right? Like, so they're wasting time and they have something that they want created or it's expensive. Like to hire me to create something unique for you with your brand. Like I have to get in that zone of genius and embody what we created for you and then find all the colors and the logos. Mm -hmm. This way, the templates that I'm creating are setting them up for success that it's just click, click, click. You change out your colors, you change out colors, right? And you're ready to go. So I cannot believe the feedback that I've been getting so much so that I I actually am creating like its own little unique branch of my business because there are so many women who are looking for it. So yeah, I'm really excited about that too. And you know, it's interesting because it is like the stock photo lane so far where you think, oh, well, how can I take something that someone else is using? But that's not the case. You're personalizing it. You're customizing it. This is giving you the start. So instead of starting at zero, you're starting at 50 and you're going to 100. Yeah. Or you know, you're know, you starting at 75 and getting to 100. Yeah. So I look at it as that. I mean, with all of these type of things, we customize them, but using stock photos prevents us from having to do a whole photo shoot all the time. And then we look at it with our eye. And I think the same thing with the templates. And I like that, you know, because Canva has their own templates, but these are very different. And what I like about them too, is that they are thematic and there's enough that you could really build your, your feed look off of this. Yes. You know, like, so there's enough, there's enough variety in that. Yeah, absolutely. There totally is. And you know, what I've loved about it is a couple of the girls who actually were in the community that we were talking about earlier on that we had created to teach the web design. Some of like, I think four or five of you guys have purchased these now. So like, this is other designers, you guys like this is high praise. And I think that's what's different about my templates, like Canva. Absolutely. There are a ton of free ones in there. And you are empowered to use all of those. What's different when you purchase a Canva template is that you typically have a designer's eye and mm-hmm. they understand spacing and they understand, you know, how much ring you need. And it's not all cluttered. Cause I think we set and guess our decisions when we're trying to DIY it ourselves and having someone else actually. And I think the other important part here is that 
my main, we started the call with this and I'm going to end it with that is that it's strategy infused Mm -hmm. and that's about the long game. You need to, you can't just put something out there, whatever it is, some kind of a graphic, whether it's an ebook or it's a story Mm -hmm. template, doesn't matter what it is that you're creating. It has to be infused with strategy. So having someone who is as passionate about design and the visual elements as they are about the strategic piece of how this is actually going to help your business I think mm-hmm. it's really important. Right. And we all know those feeds that we love and those have that strategy behind it as well. And sometimes they're not a DIY piece, you know, they're done yes. by design, they're done by strategists, they're done on a larger scale type of thing. They're done by uh, a team sometimes. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And, and I work with a lot of clients on their just creating that social strategy and working on that, that piece for them that they just presenting it so that they start to look at it and say, oh, I see the difference between just certain placements of ideas and how that creates the board I want to have versus just popping things up, you know? Yes. Yes. We all want that beautiful, worthy scroll stopping feed, right? Like that's, that's not going to go away because it's beautiful. And it's just that, and as women, we're attracted to pretty. So we want it to be beautiful. We want it. And we also want it we need it to be strategic. So we want it beautiful, but we need it to actually feed our bottom line. That's awesome. That's um, I'm going to end it right there. I do want to talk about where we can find Krista. Please join us. I'm a member of her free Facebook group called the Clarity Collective, and we'll have a link to it in the show notes. Krista, you want to tell us a little bit about what you do there? Yes, absolutely. So I really love working with women over 40 who don't understand the tech or like even just understanding how to use any of the tech. Sometimes we get so overwhelmed with all of the options that we can't even see the forest for the trees. So I like to take mm-hmm. my favorite question, Sandra, can you tell me what it is? How can this be easy? That's yes. right. <laughs> I'm like indoctrinated. Yes. Steady. <laughs> that is my favorite question. And that is what I do. And every Monday I come in and I do a card reading, an Oracle card reading, and everybody loves that. And I talk, so about, good. I talk about what I'm going to do on Thursday for training. I do training every Thursday. And on Wednesdays, I have a promo day. So if you have something that you want to promo, I have a feed that I keep updated and then I take it down after that week. But yeah, it is growing into be a lovely little community. It is. And it's super cool, like-minded women. So um, there'll be a link. You guys should go check it out. I'm in there as well. And it's a great place to just be able to connect. And I have to say, even as much as we all think, oh, I'm so involved in this. I know all of that. I am constantly like, wow, Krista is brilliant. Like, I didn't know that. I've used the hashtag thing. Like, those are, they're just things. Like, she'll say something and be like an introduction. And I'm like, wow, that is just what I needed. Because You know, another thing I say is we can't know everything. We all can't know everything. So we need to be in touch. We need to continue to learn from each other and connect with each other so that you can hear what I know and I can hear what you know. It sounds so simple, but it really is a necessity because... There's so much to know in this entrepreneurial journey. So true. So true. And Sandra, you're killing it. Like you are, you've taken a little idea and you started before you were ready. And look (laughs) at you now. Thank you. Well, I, I really appreciate all the support and connection that I get from you and all of our women in our group. And I want to thank you all for listening today. You guys, there'll be links in the show notes for the Clarity Collective Facebook group. There's also a link to Krista's website, Activate Her Awesome. And along the way, I know we mentioned some things, so I dropped those links in there as well. Oh, and to her Canva templates, if you want to check them out. And this has been great. So uh, thank you so much, Krista, for joining me. And all of you, we've got more content coming up over, gosh, this is going to be taking us into September, August, September timeframe. So there'll be more for the end of the summer. Thanks for listening. Thanks, Sandra. Thanks for joining me today. You can access more info in the show notes at thelonggamepodcast.net. If today's show connected with you in some way, please share it with your friends or hop on iTunes and leave me a review. Until next time, keep playing the long game.